Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. So, uh, so today I will actually talk about uh, the, it's related to the classification of holomorphic VO essential charge 24. Uh, this generalized deep hole notion, I think, uh, is basically in, in the paper of the news and, and Savin, and they, they use this to classify uh, holomorphic VOA. So, so as the title suggests, I, I will give a little bit more commentarial approach to this problem. Well, this is a joint work with Masahiko Miyamoto uh, of the University Group. Okay, so, well, so, so basically the, the main aim is uh, I try to uh, give a more commentarial approach towards this uh, classification, okay? Basically now this classification theorem is, uh, I, I'll talk about it and then I will explain everything, okay? So what I mean by uh, CFT type just basically means that all, everything is positive graded and then the way one space is uh, one dimensional, well, zero space is one dimensional. And then holomorphic uh, just basically means it's a simple rational and only has one irreducible module. So, so, so in terms of implementation, it's, it's, it's kind of easy thing because you have only one module, right? Uh, not one module, but everything is sum of the V, okay? So what I'm trying to explain to you is this kind of correspondence. So holomorphic of VOA of Sancho 24 will be have a one-to-one -one correspondence with some kind of pairs, okay? One, the pair contain two things. One is the uh, Lima lattice, okay? So what I mean is uh, uh, even your normal lattice of rank 24 with roots, okay? The Lich lattice is not in this uh, picture, okay? And then uh, there's uh, something uh, which is the uh, isometric group. Tau is some, something related to the isometric group and which has uh, some, some what called the positive same shape, okay? I will explain a little bit. And then you, 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 you should have some condition. But uh, basically, uh, you can classify this uh, holomorphic way using, using a pair, okay? Well, I should mention this. I mean, this is not the, actually mentioned in the paper of Johan also. He, he talked about how, how, how the correspondence between holomorphic VOA of Sancho 24 and some Lima lattice, okay, in one of his paper also. But anyway, so, so it's, it's one of the more, main motivation for us to really do this, okay? All right, so let me just give you some brief details of what uh, was known about this classification. So, so first, uh, as we know, I mean, the, the way one space of a CFT type VOA is Lie algebra, okay? So, so the first thing you need to know is about if it's holomorphic VOA of Sancho 24, what would be the, the way one space? This is actually done a long time ago by Shadikens, okay? Uh, he, he showed that there, at least there will be a 71 possible Lie algebra, which include one Lie algebra zero, okay? And this is also actually verified by, by, by Van Eken, Muller, and Shai Tower. I shouldn't say more recently because it's already five, ten, six years ago, okay? But uh, it, it was verified, okay? At that time, many things was assumed without mathematical proof, but now, now it's a complete proof, okay? And then, uh, so, so the question is try to construct all this VOA and then try to prove that uh, they are kind of unique, okay? So anyway, this was done uh, for, for the cases when uh, V1 is non-zero, okay? So all of them was constructed, and also you can show the uniqueness if the V1 is non-zero. So, so the only remaining case is the case where V1 is zero, okay? So all well, is, is done, and, but uh, the only, only problem is uh, in this, the proof is, as I mentioned, it's combined effort for many, many people. So it means there are many, many case-by-case -case checking in some cases, you don't really know what happened. So okay, you just check, okay, doesn't work. Okay. And then you just check, okay, computer work, and then also a lot of work, then you say, okay, this is unique. So, so, so we want a little bit more I mean, theoretical or more conceptual kind of thing, so, all right? Well, so this is just a list. I, if you never say this, I just show you. So I, I'm not going to use it more, okay? Well, I, I would just mention some main technique uh, that uh, this was used also. Okay, so the first uh, most important result is basically from Donna Mason, his paper in 2004. Okay, it's 10 years later after Sharkin. So, so they prove uh, V1 must be zero abelian or semi-simple. Okay? So if it's semi-simple, then you, 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 you actually have some kind of uh, formula which relate the level and also the real Cox number of the Lie algebra structure, which is related to the dimension of V1. So, so in particular, you know, uh, oh, I'm sorry, maybe I just go back here. So in particular, you know, this ratio is, is, doesn't depend on J, so all, all of them will be have the same ratio. Okay? So HI, HJ check over KJ will be equal to HI check over KI, basically, okay? okay? So 
Well, I, actually, I should mention one more thing is if it's abelian, then it must be the leach lattice via way. So, so, so basically, uh, and this case is difficult. So, 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 so hence, uh, you, you kind of concentrate on the semi simple cases. Okay. Well, the, the other main technique uh, for, for this uh, theory is uh, something called the optical construction. Okay. Well, the original one is due to Franco Lobowski moment, but uh, this general one is uh, based on the paper of Van Ecken, Muller, and Scheitauer. So, so basically, like this, if you have the VOA, which are homomorphic, so then you have no module except V. But there's something called G just a module. Okay. So you can consider the fixed point of the G and then also the just a module. Then you can construct another module of V fixed point G. Okay. Under certain condition, this space will be a homomorphic VOA. What, what this condition about is uh, this uh, Tristan module has some integral weight of modules. Okay, basically this is all, all you need. Okay, now what important about this construction is uh, it's kind of reversible. So if you start with a V, start with G, you can construct a VOA using G. Okay, you can reverse. Okay, what I mean by reverse is like this. Okay, so if you you start with V and then you have this VOA which is the, the sum of certain module from the Tristan module. Okay, this is usually called a simple theorem extension. So of this fixed point space, okay? Then you can define an automorphism, okay, on this VOA, well, by using the exponential form, okay, basically the eigenspace decomposition, okay? And then you, you, you can also consider the obvious construction using this H and this V tilde, okay? And then what, what do you get? You get back the original V, okay? So that's why I mean, if you can construct this way, then you can come back. Okay, that's usually what, how, how we prove the union. So if you start with the VOA and then you come back and then, oh, this is the only possible case. And then you just show up. Oh, sorry. So this H and G are kind of unique up to certain conjugates and then, then you get unit. So this is basically okay, the way for the unit. Okay? And there's another thing which is uh, also useful is it's kind of transitive. What I mean by kind of transitive is this. Now, if we can define a, a VOA using G, you can also do the same construction using G of I, okay? If I divide the order of G, okay? If I doesn't divide the order of G, it's, this, it's basically the same thing, so it doesn't matter. But if for any I divide G, then, then you, you still have that. So, of course, oh, this is different VOA, okay? This and this are different VOA, but it means if once you have, you have one of the construction, you can construct more, okay? If G is not prime order, okay? And also, another important thing is uh, there's some, something called dimension form, which tell you what will be the wave one dimension of the wave one space of this orbital construct, this real way. Okay, this, this will be useful uh, when you try to determine the Lie algebra structure of this uh, new VOA. Okay, well, I, I just write down something here. It, it doesn't matter what it is because I'm not going to use it. Okay, but, but in, in the paper of Niels and, and Stephen, they use this dimension to define what is called generalized default. So, so I, I, I mentioned it. Okay. But this, this is very extremely important formula. Okay. It's, of course, not an easy formula to prove, so it's very difficult. But, uh, but it's, there's some formula like this. All right, so, all right, so now the question is, uh, after all this work, okay, then we notice actually there's another more direct way to deal with this problem, okay? What, what I mean by a direct construction, okay? So, so what's going on is, okay, now you start with a homomorphic VOA. You don't know what is a V1, but uh, let's assume it's semi-simple because uh, by Donna Mason, we know it's semi-simple, abelian or zero, okay? So just assume it's semi-simple, okay? Then you have a semi-simple structure like this, okay? Then for, for a semi-simple the algebra, there's actually a one very special regular element of the, of the wild group, okay? Which is defined, well, let's H check with the Coxa element, or Coxa numbers, dual Coxa number, and then you have the wild vector, and then I consider this U, like this, okay? Then you have defined an automorphism of the V, well, which actually is an automorphism of the Lie algebra here, okay? okay. This is a, a kind of the most natural regular element of the Lie algebra, okay? So you can consider this. Well, this is an automorphism of the V, and then I have a V1. I have a V here, okay, so then I can con consider the so-called optical construction, okay. Of course, you have to check, uh, this actually works, but uh, it's, it's very easy because everything is so explicitly defined, okay. And then you will get asked, okay, what happened? What will be this new VOA, okay? Well, it turns out it's always the literal lattice VOA, okay. 
Now, I, I should mention here is uh, this theorem, we don't need anything about the Charlotte cancel list. Okay? We, we, we do use the Donna Mason, but uh, not, not the Charlotte cancel list completely. Okay? So just know if it's a semi simple, then you can always construct the Lichler system your way by using a very special element. Okay? So, the, what, what's important about this is, uh, well, well, this, or as I said, I mean, this proof uses a module invariant dimension formula and, and some, some, something related to the uh, Lie algebra, which is called a very strange formula. Okay? So it's basically kind of module invariant uh, technique. But you can also do it uh, by complete elementary argument. Okay? So best working on the Lich letters and the automorphism group and then study the let Lich, all the letters around. So you can, you can also prove the same formula without uh, this dimension formula or the strange formula. Okay. All right, so, so what's important is, well, that essentially means I can reverse the construction. It means I can get back my original V by doing one obvious construction from the Lich lattice. Okay. So, so this means any regular homophobia with 24 with V1 non zero can be constructed by an obvious from the Lich lattice. Of course, Lich lattice itself is one. I take the trivial. And then that means, well, that means V will be uh, constructed by Lich lattice and then with uh, automorphism G. Now, this G will be an automorphism of the Lich lattice V away. Okay? So now, now we will use the, some, some, some image, I mean, our knowledge about this uh, automorphism because uh, this, this is just a lattice V away and we know exactly what automorphism should be. So, so it involves two parts. One is the tau, which is related to the. Uh, the isometry of the Lich lattice. So basically, it's an element of the Conway group. Okay? And then second is, uh, is, a, is a beta here. Okay? Beta will be some element in, in, in the, not in the Lich lattice, but uh, in the Q tensor of the, the Lich lattice. And this beta, we can actually assume beta is fixed by tau. Okay? So, so that means uh, you one of the question is well, actually you have to determine what's this tau and what is this beta for everything, okay? okay. Then you, you actually have a calculation. So, so here's something uh, which is uh, quite, quite important is this, okay? Now, if I start with uh, this special element of, the, of V, okay? And then now I, I try to see what would be G. So it means G will be kind of the reverse of this construction, right? So, this G is actually very special. It's not arbitrary automorphism in the in the Lich lattice VOA, which, which which basically is a generalized dipole. Okay, I, I'll explain what's generalized dipole uh, right right in a minute. Okay, so, so what is generalized dipole? Well, we just mentioned well, there's a, some kind of dimension formula here. Okay, so it, here there's a come some kind of remaining term which is uh, non-negative, and it's a minus sign here. So so essentially, uh, what Muller Shai Tower defined as uh, this R zero, R G will be zero in, in some sense, okay, in 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 the in the case. So 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 here is what how they define uh generalized table. So G will be an automorphism. Okay. It's a generalized table where first of course you have to, to be able to perform the obvious construction to get a VOA. Okay, so they, they call it uh, type zero, I mean in, in G, but uh, it essentially means you can you can perform the obvious construction and get a VOA, okay? And of course, the second thing is uh, to do with uh, this uh, dimension of the V1. So basically it means uh, this R will be zero. So, so basically it means the R will be zero in this case. And then and another thing is they, they assume is the, the Lee rank of this Neo VOA and the Lee rank of this will be the same. Okay? So of course, I mean, for the Lich lattice, uh, this is a linear algebra, so, so it basically means the dimension of this space. All right, so, and they actually proved this theorem. They, there's a projection actually between the holomorphic view of essential 24 and generalized dipole, okay? Well, of course, we assume V1 non zero, okay? There, there's some, some kind of projection, okay? So it's a very nice theorem, okay? Now, the only thing which uh, Miyamoto doesn't like is the name, dipole, because dipole usually refer to a pawn in R24, okay? And their dipole, is an automorphism, okay? okay. So, so this is something he, he doesn't like. So they say, okay, let's try to give a better interpretation of what is a deep hole, generalized deep hole, okay? 
So this is uh, one of the motivations. So, so now it turns out, as I mentioned at the very beginning, so a generalized depot is in fact a depot, but with more condition. Okay, so this is what I try to put, explain to you how, how we, we, we prove this kind of theorem. Okay, so, so this is, uh, okay. So, so first, let, let, let's, let's see what, what's going on here. Okay, so, so now if we start with the V, then as we mentioned, we, we will, can be constructed by using certain of the construction. So in particular, it will, it will contain the fixed point space. Now G de decomposes two parts, right? Tau and then the beta. So, so you can you can split the, the the gamma into two pieces. One is the lattice part, which is uh, this lattice. Okay, so basically the the element in the fixed point lattice such that alpha beta will be integer. And also then other one, this is called the co-invariant lattice. Basically means the the lattice orthogonal to the fixed point. Okay, so there's two parts. One one is the fixed point. Lattice one is the co-invariant lattice, okay? And then there's something called beta you have to determine, okay? Okay, so, so basically, you, ha you just have to determine what kind of tau is possible and given the tau, what will be the beta? Well, G, G will be <laughs> an automorphism, so, so G will be something, uh, let's see, okay. G will be something like this. It's an automorphism of the, of the Lich lattice, so. Okay. Okay. So, so here this is one one of the, the first thing uh, we, we determine. So, what should be the possible case for tau first? Okay. Okay. So, so if if we start with uh, this u uh, v and then you start with this uh, special element u and then you take the reverse, then the automorphism g will, will look something like this. The first theorem we obtain is the tau must be one of these 11 classes. Okay. So I, I will explain uh, the idea how, how this proof is. It's basically by case by checking, but there's some, 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 something behind. Okay. Well, as you mentioned, this is already mentioned in, in, in a paper of Hearn. Okay. So he, he actually gave the, there will be only 11 possible choice, but he used a shuriken list, I think. Okay. But we, we, we prove it without the shuriken. Remember, we don't, we don't use shuriken list at all, okay, or the dimension formula in this work, okay. All right, so, so I, I just give you some idea how, how, how this could be proved. Okay, first, uh, we, we can use the Donald Mason's result. Dimension of V1 will be bigger than equal to 24, okay. For semi-simple case, we can actually assume it's bigger than 24, okay. But uh, the assumption, rank V1, there must be bigger than four because the fixed point of the Lich lattice must be, have dimension bigger than equal to four. It's just inside the, I mean, Conway group. So you can see, okay, tau must be less than equal to 15. Okay. So only, only, only maybe 20 cases is possible, basically something, okay. And then uh, if it's exactly dimension four, then, then, then there's only one case, okay. Uh, use, again, using Donna Mason's result, you can, you can check that, okay. And then another important thing is uh, we are talking about something with the way one space. So, so you can check about the, G well, Lich lattice has no way one space once you take the fixed point. So, so, so you forget about the Lich lattice. So, 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 so then you, you have to check the G system module, okay? Okay, it's split into two parts. One is the, this part and then this part, okay? And you can see beta cannot be zero, okay? So hence, uh, you will see the top weights of the system module must be less than one, okay? Okay, as I mentioned, I mean, it's kind of the kind of transitive thing going on. So, so, so the tau i, okay? We have a kind of similar condition also. So, so, so the first thing is, well, you, you check uh, the cases where the order of tau is a prime, and then you check other cases. Uh, what are the prime cases, possible cases, and then you check case by case, and you, you will get the result. So it, it's just by, by, by case by case checking, okay? Now, once you know uh, there's only 11 classes, this, this is an important observation, which we call L derivative. So, so what, what's important is, well, actually, even for the 1A case, it's true, okay? For those 10 classes or 11 classes, okay, you have isometry from this lattice. Square root L times the dual lattice of the, the fixed point to this fixed point lattice, okay? So here L is, 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 is the level. So basically, which is the order of the tau hat in the Lich lattice, okay? So uh, this probably, I just call it observation, because you, you have a 10 classes, just check. It's true, but we just observe this is true. Okay. 
So why, why this is important? Because uh, then you can transfer everything about the deal to consider a fixed point. Okay? So this, this, is, this is important, okay? So well, this as long as you can be lived to, 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 to Q times the literal lattice or even the complex times the literal lattice, but that basically Q times is enough, okay? okay? So, so by just checking, because it's 10 cases, so, so you know the conformal weight of the twisted module will be basically one minus one, one over L, and then uh, this essentially means uh, your beta must be, beta beta over two must be uh, one over L plus Z, okay? Not quite, not quite, I, I mentioned a little bit more. There are actually one or two cases which this L duality hold, but uh, still, but, uh, but there are some, some, other, some other thing which, which would eliminate them, okay? Basically, uh, this almost characterized the, okay? There's a one, one case which is uh, with the Cox, with Cox number 14, I mean, order 14, which satisfies this condition, but uh, it's not, okay? And, and that what, what this means is uh, if I using this L duality map, okay, I will get an element which has an even norm. Okay. Now you, you can see the difference is uh, beta is not integral usually, but this beta tilde is always even. Okay. So now once you have this, then there's some standard technique you can consider something we call the neighbor construction, okay, which is basically similar to the obvious construction. So you, you can consider the fixed point, I mean, not the, not the fixed point, but basically the, the sublattice, which is orthogonal, I mean, orthogonal to the alpha, this beta tilde modulus C, and also uh, you can extend this by the beta tilde. Well, it has even norms, so, so, so I just put it here. This will define a given lattice for me, and this is actually unimodular, because uh, the Lich lattice is unimodular. Okay. So, Given tau and beta, I immediately get a new even unimodular lattice. Okay. And there's, okay. So, so here's some property about this n, okay? The first, uh, I, I need to talk about a little bit about this. Uh, if I start with a, a, v, a, v, a v with a v1 not, uh, semi-simple, then I would have a kadan, then I can usually use and consider some double coset construction, then, then you get a lattice wheel which I denote by L, okay? Well, this, this VL will be related to the, uh, the fixed point lattice of the, the Lich lattice, but uh, not quite exactly the same. Okay. Anyway, now here is uh, the, the first thing is, uh, well, what is the in index of this beta inside L? Okay? Because the L must contain this fixed point okay? sub lattice. Okay? So essentially, the, the index will be L. <laughs> okay? and, and L will be look, look something like this. Now, this also is very quickly, you can see if I take the dual lattice of the L and then take the square root L, this will be even lattice. Okay? Now, even more, I mean, is you can see is uh, the index of this N with this uh, fixed points of lattice is N. N is the order of G. Okay? I, I should forget about the N tilde, it's just G, okay? Well, we have V, okay? Once we have V, then you, you can get the literal lattice, and then you can reverse go back to the V. Then you, the V is started. You start from V, and then you, you get a state. Yes, everything is set aside by V, so. No, G, well, G, G is coming from, okay, let's see, okay. G is actually coming from this thing, okay, let's. Uh, okay, let's go back to here. Okay, my G is this. Uh, is the reverse automorphism coming from this? So it's, I start from V, then I I have the delta. So this will give me the Lich lattice. Yes. Okay, and then yes, yes. Okay. So, so I start from V, which is arbitrary automorphic V of twenty four with semi simple D algebra. Okay. Okay. Let's let's go go go. Okay. Okay. So so this this will be a even lattice. Okay. 
And then I also know uh, the index will be n, so which is the order of g. Well, I, I start with v, right? So, so, so v has, is a semi-simple algebra. So, so then I can consider the cadence of algebra. And then you can consider the double commutant of the VOA generated by H. Or small l is, is, is the order of the tau hat. Okay. Okay. So, so, and here, this index will be n. So, so it's related to the order of G. Okay. Okay. Now, here is, 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 is one of the key things. Okay. If I start with n, then I get this, okay? And this is important. So if I, well, because uh, tau will fix beta and also the beta tilde. So, so, so tau will act on, on n also, okay? This is one of the, the key thing is, if I using this uh, phi, which is my, my L duality map, they show you the n tau will be isomorphic to square root of L star. So, so what, what, what I mean is that this L star will be exactly the fixed point lattice of my neural module lattice I just construct. Well, tau is the automorphism of the rich lattice, okay? But it fixes this beta tilde. So hence, it will, it will, it will define automorphism with n. Yeah, yes. So, and then it, it also fixes beta. So, so hence, uh, it fixes beta, it fixes, and then it acts on this, so it also acts on tau n, okay? And then you can consider the fixed point, and then th this is the, okay. Now, what, why, why this is important is because uh, the Lie algebra structure of the V1, it, in fact, is encoded inside this L star, okay? So, so it means uh, this N tau, we're actually telling you the root system of the, of the L star, okay? Well, the, the pool just uh, working uh, carefully on everything, okay? So another thing is uh, which, we can easily see this new lattice is not the rich lattice. Means it's really a Lima lattice with root. Okay. Of course, I mean this is also true. I mean, okay. Well, the proof is just basically because uh, the n tau is square root l l star. Okay, so they have different discriminant if okay with the discriminant of n tau uh, gamma tau, then hence they cannot be the same. Now here is uh, the, 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 one of the most, most important theorem that we, we prove, okay? So now I can define beta equal to this number, okay? So this in fact determines a deep hole. This in fact proved is, is a deep hole. So, so what exactly going on is uh, you, you actually show n is actually the Cox number of h of n. Because now I know they're different. So, 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 so this is a, uh, Lima lattice, okay, not equal to this. So you have a constant number h, okay, and in fact n will be the h, okay. So the order of g will be the constant number of this n, basically. Then then you can use once you can show this, then 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 you can show accurate. This is in fact a, a deep hole, and because the the way deep hole will have the distance two from the from the rich lattice, so without loss you can actually choose beta such that this is two. So, what well, this proof requires quite quite a lot of calculation, but uh, but basically it, it's just uh, checking all the possible cases because uh, it it depends on tau and also the phi map. Okay. Okay. So so that means uh, the Cox number of this n will be exactly the order of g, and this tau will define divide the order. Okay, so tau will be part of it, so so will be divide the order. So so from that you actually you actually actually see is if I give you the tau. You don't have too many choices for n. Well, basically, n has only 23 choices, but because of this condition, tau is a special order. It would divide the Coxon number, so, so, so it's, it's basically quite few every time once you fix tau. Okay. Okay. So now there's another important thing which I, I, I should mention here is, uh, as I mentioned, I mean, there are two, two kinds of things. Once you have tau, then you can split the lattice into two pieces, right? The fixed point lattice and the covariant lattice, okay? Similar for the n, so I can have n, I have a fixed point of n, and then I have a covariant part of the n, okay? So, 
So because uh, beta tau fixed the beta tilde, so so hence uh, the covariant part of this gamma beta tilde tau will be actually the, the covariant lattice of the Lich lattice. And this will be basically contained inside the covariant lattice my n. Remember n is uh, the, the label using the beta tilde, okay? Okay, now here's uh, one of the key observations is, uh, we, we notice uh, this lattice actually does not depend on beta tilde. You can pick, choose any beta tilde which is fixed by tau. This covariant part will be exactly the same all the time. Okay. Okay. In fact, uh, we, we actually showed this. And tau always contain a special lattice, which is the root lattice of A type. Okay. Now here, here's a much stronger statement here. If my tau has the same shape like this, okay? Forget about all the one, okay? Then the R will be a root lattice, which, which is A, M, I, A, I. So, so, so means that this will correspond to this A. And in fact, tau will act on this as a coxal element. So this is actually a very strong statement here. So, and, and because of this, uh, a lot of cases are not possible, okay? So, so you can eliminate basically all the all the difficult cases because of this. Okay. And, and, of and also, uh, you can see the, if I consider just this uh, covariant lattice and then con over this, uh, the root lattice, it's a single group of all the tau. So, so the index also tau, okay? And as I mentioned, this tau actually acts as a coxine element on R. So, so, so once I fix tau, half the part is automatically fixed. Only the important part is about the, the beta you have to determine. Okay. Okay. So, so what, what's going on is uh, this is basically telling you you can classify holomorphic with semi charge 24, okay, at least for the semi simple one, okay, by using a pair. One is tau, which is uh, one of the, the 11 classes. Second is the beta tilde, which is a deep hole, which is fixed by tau. Okay. Now, of course, there's still some condition. Okay, so, so first, first condition is it fixed by tau and of norm two, and then the Cox number of n must be divisible by tau, and then it contains something like this. Now, but you still need to think about some, some equivalence, okay? okay. So, so I, I define uh, some, some equivalence here. So there's only two, 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 two conditions, extra condition. One is uh, this beta tilde and this beta prime tilde. These two dipole must be equivalent dipole in the Lich lattice. Okay. So that essentially means you have uh, automorphism in the Lich lattice and uh, a lambda such that this is true. Okay. Now, so, so this define an, an automorphism in the, okay? So, Second thing is the tau must be conjugate to this in O of n. Okay. Well, tau and tau prime, this both will, will act on n because this is a equivalent dipole. So once you, you, you do this uh, conjugation, they will define the same lattice for you. Okay. So, so the condition is this, this two must be conjugate. So this two condition, one and two, okay. Well, I, I should mention here, tau and tau prime will be conjugate in, in the relation lattice also because they will have the same shape. All right, so, okay. So here, here's one of the theorem, okay. So essentially, what, what's the theorem is that there's a one-to-one constant -one between the set of homomorphic wheels and Charles 24, having non abelian V1 means semi-simple one, okay. And the set T over this relation. Okay. So, so I just go back to, to this, okay. So the two conditions, this are equivalent dipole, so basically mean they define the same Lima lattice for me, okay. And then second is, uh, this tau and tau prime essentially are conjugate inside the orthogonal group of n, okay? So, so you can see these two conditions, in fact, are very much just related to n. Okay? Well, you, you, you start with uh, equivalent dipole, so it's equivalent to, to say, a Niemeyer lattice, okay? And then the conjugation here also, okay? okay. So, 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 so let's uh, give more detail uh, what, what, how this can be proved, okay? So, so so now we start with the pair. Well, we already did one, one part, right? If I have a homomorphic wheel weight, I would, I would get a pair like this, okay? So, so let's, let's do the reverse, and then I have this T and T prime, so, so I could define this beta, and then I can define an automorphism like this, right, by just using tau in the head, okay, which is automorphism with Lich like this, okay? And then this will, will actually give me a VOA, V, okay? okay? So the only thing you need to do is uh, just show if they are equivalent, then they will define as homomorphic wheel weight, okay? So, so what, what's going on is so you can actually reverse everything and then get all the conditions. For example, uh, if you take the H is the Cox number of my, my Niemeyer lattice N, well, this comes from the, the dipole D. 
beta, then the order of this automorphism I just defined will be exactly H, okay? Which is the same, same as what I do other direction, okay? And then uh, we can also consider the L, okay, of the, now this time, V is the VOA obtained by G tilde, okay? But uh, we, we still have the same result, so square of L of L star will be N tau, okay? And then you, 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 you can do whatever, okay? You essentially get almost the same thing. We get okay, and here's what important is you can well what I mean a W element is the, the one I just wrote U equal to one over H I J check row summation okay. You can find an element okay such that this is true, and in addition this will be the reversal morphism of the original one okay. So you can reverse okay, so it's it's kind of the same. It defines the same automorphism for you. So so they they they're similar okay. I just mentioned uh okay here is uh. Basically, what I mean is you can recover everything I just mentioned about the, the V, the Lima letters, and also the, okay, by just using this pair, okay? And, and this alpha tilde, in some sense, is just, uh, just this element. So, so I have the, it's a Lima letter, so I can consider the wild vector over H. But, uh, but this pi is just, uh, I project it to the fixed point, okay? Because uh, beta, my alpha must be fixed by, by, by that, so anyway, so. So, so it's okay. Okay. Now, I will mention a little bit more uh, about uh, how 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 you can use this n and uh, this n and tau to classify the the holomorphic real way. Okay. So so here is his to do with something I call the orbit diagram. Okay. That which actually uh, also in in a paper of of Johan also okay. he he talked about this, but his his interpretation is slightly different from what I did here. But essentially the same thing. Okay. Okay. So I start with the dipole, okay, which is this, and then uh, then I can define a, a lattice n, which is a neighbor lattice, which is not the same as the my Lima lattice, and then and then the Cox number h will be the order of my automorphism g. Okay. Now which uh is actually the LCM of L R I H I check. R I is the uh, lacing number of the Lie algebra. Okay. And of course, I mean, we also have uh, this uh, n tau will be isomorphic to this uh, n tau, okay? And then you can consider the, 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 norm, the, the root system of this uh, Lima lattice. So, so, so of course, because it's a union of this, so I can actually split into the several cases. So our k, basically uh, the roots inside this subset here, okay? Okay, so, one one of the things is that the minimum norm of the Lich lattice is bigger than equal to four. So so we have two roots. Okay, this this thing root basically uh, the the norm will be basically zero or minus one. Okay, the inner product will be zero or minus one because uh, it must be cannot be positive. Okay. So so then you can consider the thinking diagram associated with this R K. Okay, for each K. Okay. So the two nodes are labeled by element. Of this and they're connected if they're only if the x y has inner product minus one. So it's it's the same same as before, like the algebra. Okay. So, so what's important is tau actually acts on each r k. Okay, because uh, I'll fix this beta. Okay. Okay. So. So hence how we actually each k okay, and actually it acts as the dagger monomorphism for each k. Okay. So the, in particular cases, uh, because our assumption is beta tilde is a dipole. So it means uh, this first set out is a disjoint union of so-called so affine diagram associated with the n. So you have many affine diagrams, okay, and tau acts on it as a dagger monomorphism. Okay. Now another thing which is uh, important is uh, because uh, tau will be a coxal element on a special sub lattice R, okay? So means it's a wild group. So my tau will act as a wild group of the root system, okay? And in particular, it would deserve all the individual components. Okay, you, you don't have any permutation involved, okay? So it will deserve all the system, okay? Okay, so, so another thing which is uh, important is uh, when I deal with this uh, n tau, Okay, then you have a generator like this, okay? Okay. Then this lambda must be also an element of my Lima lattice. Okay. So what, what it means is uh, 
This lambda actually corresponds to a code word of the Google code of n over r. Now, this is one of the, the things uh, observed by, by Johan. He used uh, actually the code word of the Google code to define automorphism. Okay. Okay. So because of the, the construction, so this is the only choice you have. All the tau must correspond to this kind of code word. Okay. Okay. And, and here is uh, we, the so-called quotient diagram because it acts on the Diagram, so, so here, it, well, and be, also because uh, it, it related to the Google, so, so the shape of tau will be very special for each cases. Okay, so, so this is uh, basically the, the type of case, because uh, for, for our cases, uh, it's Lima letter, so it's only ADE type, okay? And tau must be containing a system of A type inside for each case, so, so this is uh, kind of the, how, how we embed and then the same shape and how the diagram of morphism acts, and then what would be the related quotient diagram, and then what would be the fixed point letters, and also some, some fixed point of the simple roots will be there. So, so this diagram is essentially the same as the uh, gel papers, but, uh, but I just use a different interpretation. Just, uh, he, he just used Google code, but I use the Coxa diagram, Coxa element of the, of the root system. So, so it's, but it's essentially the same. Okay, so. So the fixed point is a root lattice or quotient diagram, okay? And, and here, you can define uh, something called the fixed node, okay? So basically, what a fixed node is, a fixed simple root, right? Means if a diagram, then the fixed that node means the simple root was fixed by my tau, okay? Okay, okay so, and, and this will actually uh, determine the, the Lie algebra GI. Okay? But here's just a, Another thing which uh, related to uh, Hearn's uh, work, I mean, so if you, you think about the simple Lie algebra, okay, the bi, then th there will be one. Our i, h, i check will be equal to the Coxa number h. Okay, so an L will be basically our i, k, i. So, so essentially what it means is that the k, i of h, i check for every Lie algebra will be L over h. So this is telling you uh, what will be the level of the h Lie algebra. I just construct because this, this number is fixed. Okay. Okay. So so it just okay. And and the short would correspond to the Uvidus component and then anyway, basically it, it just means uh, we, we can we can actually recover all the Lie algebra structure just using a diagram. And how is it related? Okay. There's one more thing here, okay. Well, I think recently there's another paper by uh, by by Westerfin and Niels, uh, they define something called generalized whole diagram. Okay? Okay, so their generalized whole diagram essentially uh, is the same as uh, the diagram associated with the fixed, the simple short root of the full component. Okay, so, so those fixed by the, the simple root, short root fixed by tau. So, so, so they recover, I mean, so our results actually agree with what they did also. So, so they use generalized that whole diagram to classify the holomorphic view of it. Okay, we, we just do the same thing, but uh, we have a little bit uh, more detail about the, the diagram. Actually, there are more you can, you can, you can use, not just this, but, but this alone could fix the Lie algebra already, so, so it's, it's insufficient. Okay, so, okay, so, so finally, I, I just uh, mentioned some, somehow uh, how, 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 how this will give you a classification of the real way. So, so basically, we start with uh, 10 cases. Okay, one A is okay, is you don't have to do anything, okay? But uh, if you have two A, then, then the, the, the frame shape will one of A, okay? So my n tau will look something like this because it must contain A1 to the A because of this two to the A, so I have A1 to the A. And then you have a one vector, which is have the order two inside, so, so this must be the, the blue vector. So, so essentially, you want to find the my lattice, okay? Containing this as a sublattice. Okay, now because uh, tau is order two, so the Cox number of my lattice must be divisible by two. So, so, and then it must contain this. So you can easily list out all the possible cases. Okay, and then by using the, the, the quotient diagram, I can say, okay, okay, how it embed inside, and then you can actually determine what will be the way, way one space. Okay, n and tau will actually fix this way one space. So, so they, they're just right here, okay. And then, for example, uh, if you can, for example, 3B, then you have A2 to the 6. Okay. 
then you you just need to know how how those kind of thing embed, and then once you, you have the embedding, then you the quotient diagram will tell you what is the Lie algebra, okay, and just basically do this, okay, okay, and and it's, it's just a final final process because you have only twenty three Lie my lattice, and it must contain a very special sub lattice inside, so it's, you don't even need to use computer, just use hand, you can, you can finish it in, a, in about an hour. Okay. okay, so this is all the cases, okay. Okay, so, so here is just uh, one, one thing I, I mentioned, because uh, in, in Hearn's uh, paper, he, he, he talked about using the definer automorphism using Google. Basically, it's essentially the same as us, so, so because the tau corresponds to isometry of the Google C, because C defined the, the Googling, and this, C also telling me that what would be the, uh, the automorphism because the automorphism should essentially act on the risk system as a coxine element. Okay, so the C actually determine the automorphism also. Okay, and and you can recover all basically everything in in Hearn's paper, and then you will find okay there are forty six E algebra of V one if the rank is the bigger than zero and less than twenty four. Basically, it's all the semi simple case. And this gives you uh, an, another proof, which is there's only 71, 71 possible algebra of the algebra. Okay. Now, in fact, we actually, as I mentioned in, in the paper, in the, in the theorem, it's a correspondence. So, so in fact, you also know there are only 69 <laughs> semi-simple cases because okay, it's this one-to-one -one correspondence with respect to, to this uh, relation. So, but anyway, this this is basically uh, the, the type of thing we. We, we prove, okay, so, so this last part is, is basically depend on, on very strongly about the, the structure of the end tau because the end tau is very special, so, so, so all, everything, okay, so, so essentially uh, this uh, gives a kind of uh, the explanation for, for the paper of Gerald why his list works, okay, okay, maybe, yeah, I did a bit early, but then I think I just stop here.